So we're here to talk about we're here to talk about T-shaped learners. So what do you guys think? What questions do you have? Can somebody explain to me what a T-shaped professional is? Why it's useful? So there's I think there's two key concepts. One is breadth, and the second is the depth. And we want to make sure that. Um, all of our graduates have a breadth of knowledge and so they understand and, and then one of the analogies I think that most of you are familiar with is this idea of a full stack software engineer <clears throat> and so knowledge of the full stack is that breadth of knowledge and then the depth comes from being an expert in something but we don't just want um, and our hope is that one of the things that we've been able to do is both as part of the training is to um, make the depth of your knowledge deeper, um, probably a little bit broader than it was before, but especially to enlarge your horizons in terms of the top of the T, understanding things like communication, um, peer mentoring, understanding how the whole data flow looks like. Um, for some of you who had a software engineering background, providing not only skills in ML, but also in data engineering. So extending that uh, shape of the T. So that's uh, your assignment is relatively straightforward. Most important is to um, to actually draw out your own T. And what I'm expecting to see is that people will start to identify gaps where they think or they wish that they had specific pieces of knowledge and they're missing. So for example, it might be that somebody has um, wants to learn uh, I don't know, wants to learn entrepreneurship or they want to learn management skills or they want to have a specific knowledge of an industry. So maybe somebody wants to be an expert in fintech or in um, credit scoring or in the advertising industry or in speech to text or in chatbots or whatever it might be. And so what we're asking you to do is to think consciously about what is that shape of your T and to work on um, to work on that, to actually draw it out, and to spend a little bit of time looking at uh, somebody who you think is a good, um, somebody that you want to be, and learn a little bit about them, and uh, what is it about that person, what are some of the skills that you would like to pick up. So that's it, but maybe we can, I mean, so it's relatively straightforward, but I'd like to make sure that everyone understands the concept of a T-shaped um, professional. And we've provided a couple of links and resources there. So are there, who can explain what a T-shaped professional is? Mbani? So from my understanding of what a T-shaped person is, it's like a person who is, um, who has like in-depth knowledge on a particular subject, but as well as he has like uh, like a general understanding of other things. Mm -hmm. And why is it why is that useful? Uh, it's it's useful because uh, like having that general understanding of other things is important because with that the technology is changing, so you need to be up to date with that kind of stuff like when you talk about machine learning that, that's like being able to use docker and kubernetes but uh, also having that speciality your understanding of machine learning yeah i think i think that's what i can say again. so yeah i think that's a good description i would uh rephrase that and say perhaps not a general understanding but under knowing what it is and how it works without knowing the technical details so you understand what is the role of it, how does it work, how does it fit together, what does that whole system look like when it works together um, without having to know the details of exactly how it works or how to program it or to make it functional, but you, um, you know enough about it. So that's our goal. We want everyone here to think about their own shape of the T and to especially identify gaps that they might have. So I think, Smench, I, I think that a T-shaped professional is somebody who is able to do that, but um, or they should be able to do that if they if they've formed their T in the right way. Um, 
Yeah. Does somebody else want to go ahead and give me a description of what a, they think a T-shaped professional is? Stella? Um, could it be someone who can work in a team of people with different uh, expertise and uh, understand at least some concept of what everyone is? is uh, applying in the team yeah i think that that's that's another good way to look at it i think as people grow into managing different parts of teams then their breadth of knowledge definitely has to increase and i think that um it was interesting to see that some of the feedback from the team leaders they all noted that they had to be ahead of their team and they learned more about the project than they would have excuse me, they would learn more about the project than they would have if they hadn't been the team leader because they were getting information, the detailed information from all different parts of the project. And so I think that uh, it is important to be a good team member. And yeah, I think one always has to find the balance between learning, not trying to go too broad and being uh, happy to go deep in specific areas. Yeah, and Boris, I think that's a good that's a good description. Um, yeah, I, I, it's true. I absolutely can't do it, but hopefully my T is broad enough that I know what you guys are doing. And this is where I think Yevabel and I found that there's a good collaboration because our T's overlap, and I think that my depth and his depth are in completely different areas. And hopefully they're complementary. So yeah, I mean, that's that's all we're looking for. The resources are there. Um, we don't have a huge, I mean, frankly speaking, my, my energy this week has been more on the area of, um, on the career side of things, but we want everyone to go through this exercise and to ideally, in an ideal world, each of you identifies um, one or two points that perhaps you hadn't you hadn't actively considered that you realize you want to learn and pick up on. And it doesn't mean you need to do it right away. But for example, if somebody doesn't feel comfortable in, I don't know, documenting their code or they're not comfortable in making oral presentations or they are uncomfortable in, maybe Docker is a word that scares specific people. Um, and if you identify that as a gap, then at least that lets you know what's missing. And so you can say, I need to go and put this on my list of things to understand whenever you get the chance to understand it. Recognizing that not there's no one who can do everything. So um, any questions, folks? Any questions? Bunny? Yeah, I have a question on the exercise. We are told to identify a person who like who has a T shaped. So I am I'm, I'm not really clear like how do you identify that person? Like how do you know like this person? That's a good question. Um that's where a little bit of research, I think, is required. Um, and so it doesn't, I think you have to look for evidence of their T-shapedness. So somebody who it's, might be doing a little bit of, you'll probably be looking for someone who's writing or who's publishing articles. He, may, he or she may be involved in a mentoring program. Or you can see from the work that they've done, they might have published on their GitHub profile. They might be working across a broader spectrum than other typical people. Um, and this is why we're looking for somebody who's probably a little bit more advanced. But these are the aspects that we want you to think about. What uh, what should you be working to develop in the coming years? Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah. And so you need to find evidence of that, but this is why you just need to find one person. We're not looking for, it doesn't have to be, um, we're just looking for one person that has those characteristics.
Anyone else? Abraham? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, actually, it's not a question. Uh, it's just to remind you that uh, yesterday I sent my profile link in okay chat, uh, but I didn't receive any feedback. So now I don't know in which part of my profile I should have to correct my mistake. Ah, I, so I'm looking at, yeah, so you, you have to check against the checklist. Okay, okay. Have you have you checked it against the checklist? I think I had a look. Um, I mean, so there's, there's certain things that are not, it's there, but I think there's some things. So I'd like you to check it against the checklist and let me know when you think it's ready. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm just looking here. Um, yeah, so it's, it's not, I'm looking at it, the CV is not linked. Um, there, so there's there's a couple of things that you need to fix. So Abraham, please look at the checklist and then let me know once you've uh, satisfied all the conditions of the, not the conditions, but those the guidance that's been provided on the checklist. Okay, okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, guys, are there any questions? Otherwise, we can just wrap up. No questions? Deborah? Yeah, uh, when looking at the gaps that we have currently, uh, there are so many tools that we're not familiar with. How do we uh, focus on the right things? If that makes sense. Can you ask the question again? Uh, there are so many tools that we are not familiar with, right? Like there are so many things that we think we have gaps on. So how, sh how should we focus on which of those we should make a priority? So can you give me an example? So what, what are some of the tools that you feel like you're not familiar with? Uh, for example, for me, uh, I'm not uh, confident in my SQL skills and mm -hmm. with Docker. These are just some examples. But I can be like, I, I'm not comfortable with Java. I'm not comfortable with JavaScript. So how do I focus on the right tools? Okay, so I think that's that's a fair question. It's a good question. So which track are you going for? Uh, machine learning engineering. Okay, so let's let's work backwards from there. What what are the what's the job spec that's written in the careers doc? What do you need uh, to have? What are the key points? Right, the, there is a SQL. There is a different deep learning uh, frameworks like PyTorch or TensorFlow. Uh, there is a, a unit testing and CI/CD integration, uh, MLOps. Yeah, so I'm looking. There's there's a table there that's been uh, with some of them that are bolded. So I think those are those are definitely things to focus on. I think tools like Docker are nice to have, but uh, Python for that for machine learning engineering. JavaScript, I'm looking at the bolded ones. JavaScript is bolded, Python is bolded, Bash is bolded, Postgres, TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, A-B testing, Jenkins, AWS, PyTorch, Keras, PyTest are things that are bolded. So I would focus on those on those ones uh, first. Okay. But it's, it's a little bit, I mean, part of this is you have to also, do, this is our, it's a, it's almost a, it's the McDonald's hamburger of machine learning engineering, and different hamburgers are made differently. So this is the, this is kind of the base case. So I don't know to what extent you're comf how comfortable you are with JavaScript or not. I don't know if your SQL is zero or medium or weak. Um, I would I would again start with a list of those things that seem like the most important. You can use this as a guide. 
um, you should talk to other people and start developing your list of, at least you can put these in your tea and say right now Docker is there and I don't know it very well. Um, SQL is there and I don't know it very well. And you can start working on the area in which you are very deep. And you can even identify some gaps where you want to go deep. So if you believe that knowledge of JavaScript plus Python plus SQL plus Docker is very important, then I would leave it there as a blank space. And that will help you to decide where you're missing, what you're missing. Other people may be technically very strong, but maybe they struggle with um, understanding a specific domain or an industry, or maybe their visualization is weak. So it's it's that thought process that we're trying to trying to encourage. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. And there's no there's no right or wrong answer here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who else would like to? Uh, from Bunny? Yes. Yeah, so I was just wondering, like, if it's possible, like, because during the during the project we are using AWS, which was like a privilege, sort of. So I was just wondering, like, for our other, if if I decide to work on a, another personal project just to improve on my skills, like, so I need some computing power and all that stuff. Like, is that possible for? You guys to grant <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not able. It's expensive. Um, we haven't. We decided to do it because we thought it was important, um, but it's expensive, and so we're definitely not able to do that. Um, yeah, I would look around and see if there's other ways that you could find that computing power, either through a university, see what Colab can do for you, see if you can get on to um, different projects. But unfortunately, that's we're not able to do that. Not yet. Hopefully, in future but we're not able to do that. All right, all right, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions on, does this, does this idea um, of being a T-shaped learner and identifying gaps, does that make sense? Any questions around that? No? OK. So then let's wrap up. Um, you guys know where to find me on Rocket Chat. But I would encourage everyone to use this opportunity to think through what, what they might be missing. And to me, it would be a successful outcome if you identify one or two areas where you need to develop and become a bit stronger. And I think that this mapping process um, should be useful for everyone. From Bonnie? Yeah, one last question before we go. And I had a question on the data camp. So yeah. like I didn't I didn't clearly understand. Is it like free for the whole year or what? Um it's free, but I think that there's also this um they have some certification thing which may be time limited, but I believe the courses are free for one year. I think it's till September tenth or eleventh, two thousand twenty two. Yeah, it's so we have a partnership with them. They want you guys. So, the, so, but, so what is free? There's no money involved, but they may ask for payment in publicity. Okay. No, yeah. Right. I mean, nothing is totally free. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, anyone else? No, we're good. All right. Thank you, everyone.